Hey folks, this is Vagrant. Welcome back to the Thaumaturge. A very last minute Thaumaturge. <laughs> so I'm recording this. Basically, this video should technically go online in 45 minutes and I'm recording it now. I am, uh, it's been, a, it's been a day. It's been a day. I basically finished working out about 15 minutes ago and then did the thumbnail for the best in slot video tonight and then hopped into this. And my workout has <laughs> kicked my ass, absolutely destroyed me. So it's going to be maybe a slightly short, but definitely a low key episode. It might be a, it might be a 30 minute episode. That may make, that might make more sense, actually. Yeah, let's just we'll, we'll see if we find like a natural stopping point. <sighs> I'd rather get some content out and uh, hopefully be a bit better prepared tomorrow. I am. Uh... <sighs> I'm beat. <laughs> I'm so beat. Today was, I don't know what it was about today, just an especially, I moved on to a new weight in Ofed Press, and I moved on to a new weight in Bench Press, and the culmination of that is that my body no longer works, <laughs> basically. It's the tailor. Mr. Shulsky, come in. What's new? Do you reckon that's long enough for the video? <laughs> Thank you for joining me now. I've got some fresh ideas for you. Promising. Is this the end? But you can't keep oh, wearing no. the same attire. Please, come back to me if you find more inspiration. How is this possible? Meanwhile. <laughs> How is this even I possible? Will. How? Every time I think I finally, finally finished this bloody mission, there's yet more to find. I've got so many. I think I prefer the one. What did I have on? Uh, that one. Yeah, I like that. Man, <laughs> I really, really thought that might be the end. Uh, right, so we are gonna work. Let's go get this done quickly. This uh, the siphon. God, my arms are fucked. <laughs> go get this done, and then we'll um work on the singular side quest we have, and then we can get back to the main quest. Basically. Thankfully, I'm miles ahead on Dragon's Dogma, so that's less of a concern. Oh, God. What a professional and very entertaining this video. Entertaining. Uh, la, 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 la. A professional and entertaining video, I'm sure this is going to turn out to be. Maybe people will take joy in my pain. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. That's quite a cool little shop, though. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, hello. hello. What's up? Where, where, where? Oh, have I just ended up at the exact right spot for the uh, for this quest? Oh, I'll worry. Right. <laughs> Billfold. Meticulously emptied... Oh, I have to talk so much. My throat doesn't work. Business cards and photographs are all that remain. The theft was quick and discreet. It had to be discreet. And not for the sake of professionalism, but out of fear of the magician. If he catches someone stealing on his turf, he won't let it go. Quickly and discreetly then. Very discreetly. Okay, so he's scared of Rof. Rofe. I think it's Rofe, isn't it? Something like that. Got many, many different little things all over the place. I don't actually want to do this now. <sighs> I'm sorry, Ralph. I know it makes sense to be here. I know it does. It seems efficient, but I, I'm incredibly paranoid about the side questing. That if we don't get the side quest done now, maybe we'll run out of opportunity down the line, you know? You know what I should do? I should just have a quick little poke on the map. See if there's any... Points of in uh, the problem is it doesn't say on the map what type of points of interest it is. Usually they're viewing spots, which isn't helpful. I need the things that lead to the viewing spots. Now I mean. Okay. Nice low-key episode. <laughs> I don't know what it was today. I really don't I couldn't possibly tell you why today has whooped me quite so hard. Mr. Shulsky. Thank you for coming. Hey, Dick Stein. Came as fast as I could. I came here as fast as I could. Yes, thank you. However, you must wait a minute. I have a phone call. Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back shortly. I'm gonna rummage through your things. If you don't mind. Cabinet key, okay. I'm not gonna wait yet. 
List of banned topics. This is to announce and stress that in accordance with the ruling of the Government Commission on Religious Denominations and Public Enlightenment, it is forbidden to educate anyone on topics related to deceitful and socially harmful subjects. These include teachings related to the history of the alleged Polish nation, revolutionary socialist ideas, and backwards theories pertaining to the alleged thaumaturgy. Removing these topics from public debate will allow the nation of the Russian Empire to flourish and reach its full potential. Ideological recommendations for the departments of the University of Warsaw are two camps of thought have settled in the letter. Some are fervent, full of zeal, others as cold as a mountain stream. The voices tried to merge it into one. They spent long hours bargaining and negotiating. Can proclaiming lies be reconciled with words of enlightenment? Official letter. Dear sir, please be advised that your repeated requests for permission to register a higher education institution have been denied. Please note this decision is final. You are not entitled to any appeal procedures. Warsaw does not need another educational institution. The existing ones are considered sufficient from the perspective of the policy pursued by the Russian Empire. Sincerely, Mirislav Kizhanyuk. Verification of approval for the establishment of a new department at the uni. Letter to the detainee's family. Dear friends, Voldemar has been one of the most talented students. There are no words to express my sorrow over what happened. I can only assure you that you can count on my help and support. In case of trouble, please do not hesitate to ask. Yours sincerely, Dickstein. Flower, lard, grey soap and a toy soldier. And among them, a letter expressing sorrow and support for Voldemar's family. The package is filled with remorse. Words hide in the box's nooks and crannies, trying to make themselves scarce under goods. But they can still be seen. Words that will always be awkward, and never enough. Deck of cards, the edges are worn, someone uses this deck often. The hands move fast and the eyes follow every motion. Diamonds, tents, aces, everything radiates focus. Now she comes out on top even though no one will notice. Reshuffle. Okay, what do I use this cabinet for? Do we, do we pop upstairs? Let's pop upstairs. Doesn't hurt to have a rummage, there's a cabinet. Refusal letter concerning the legalization of TFU, that would be the Flying University. I really don't know how to express myself more clearly. Don't write to me again. Don't bother me at work. Don't try to contact my family. And if you see me on the street, be so kind. Pretend you don't know me. Your request borders on madness. Free education? It's a fairy tale. University for women? <laughs> That's some kind of deranged hallucination. This is Russia, not Paris. It won't work. Ever. If you don't understand that, you'll end up in the Citadel. Forgive me, I have no such desire. That's why I'm repeating myself for the hundredth time. Stop contacting me. Without regards. N. Bloody Nora. Offer refuses help. The smell of fear fills the nostrils and stifles breathing. The man asks for too much. One cannot step out of line or take risks. One cannot trust. Dick Stein is working to legalize the flag university. So far, little success. Shockingly enough. Well, it feels like all this will be information uh, useful in a moment. Signed by Anna and Zivik. They hope that their beloved husband and father fares well. One last farewell kiss. A child's small hands slowly slip from the adult's grasp. One last look and the train leaves to a place far from here. It leaves behind emptiness, sorrow, and the belief that this is the only way the loved ones will be safe. Gonna ship them out of the country. Or at least the city. Cigarette butt. The remains of a cigarette still smouldering. Ash and self-control spread around the cigarette butt. Tobacco is a bandage. A bandage for sorrows. It cradles the wound, keeping away the thoughts of the young people who risk imprisonment and their lives. In the name of an ideal or his ambition, it's better not to know. It's better the smoke. A risky game. Dick Stein is perfectly aware of the danger that comes with running an illegal university. The cause is important and the goal is worth every effort. However, every person imprisoned because of it adds to the burden on his conscience. Could it be too high a price? He's doing something... noble. As long as people go into it knowing they could... you know... Oh, put the key. Ah, see. Ah, that's clever, isn't it? Use the cabinet key and then put it away so he doesn't notice anything. I'm going to have a little eavesdrop, I think. Couldn't hurt. Don't look at me like that. After all, Dickstein himself wants me to discover everything, right? Yes, boy Dick is brave. But the thing is, he might be too brave. No, I don't know anything. I don't even have anyone I could ask. Yes, I miss you. But caution comes first. How are your parents? You always say that and then your hands get cold. Hold on. Run, Victor, run! Did you say something to me? No, no, I was just talking to myself. 
Nice apartment. Uh, thank you. Please wait until I'm finished. Okay, didn't have to run. Of course. <laughs> I was a little worried that if I kept, it was, I felt like it was going to be one of those things where if I kept pushing it and pushing it, it was going to tip over the edge. A soft tone, loud laughter and tenderness shown for every word, whoever's on the other end of the line. Dick Stein certainly has great affection for them. Affection of phone calls, the trace of a woman left in the apartment. Trace of a woman sounds like a cheesy 90s erotic thriller. <laughs> None of my business, really. Unfortunately, I'm curious by nature. All right, let's have a little sip. Now that you're comfortable and all ears, I think we can begin. Is that point As you already know, recently one of my students was arrested. I think your help will be invaluable. Mm. The phone call you received, was it anyone important? First of all, it was a private conversation. It was my wife, if you must know. I understand that I must answer more uncomfortable questions. There's a softball in you, buddy. How can I help? I'm afraid that the arrest of this boy threatens the continued operation of the Flying University. You're afraid he might simply give you up? I have also heard that some students have begun to accuse each other of working with the Ochrana. It's very destructive. Who's the arrested student? Valdemar, a very talented arithmetician. I feel bad for him. A locksmith's son. So, you should manage in jail. Yes. But what scares me most is the atmosphere of distrust that has set in. Of suspicion. A witch hunt. In order for the meetings to continue, I need to know if someone has actually betrayed us. The venue of our next lecture can also be considered compromised. Do you like to play solitaire? What makes you ask that? You're not a gambling man, but your cards appear used. Oh, the cards? Yes, well... I know Polina left them here. Cards also involve math. I use them to explain probability calculus. You teach your students how to count cards? Trust me, this has no relation to our case. Is she the one the students suspect of being an Ochrana spy? Because she's Russian? Regrettably, we live in such xenophobic times. But I don't harbor even the slightest suspicion against her. Actually, I would like you to definitively eliminate her as a suspect. Preferably without her finding out. Of course, I can be very discreet and go about this delicately. We'll round up all suspects in one place. Next, we'll say that I'm there because of a thaumaturgical lecture that you yourselves have requested. Good idea. The question is, where? My house. I think it's time for me to reciprocate with an invitation to my house. I only need to ask my sister first. Called it. Wonderful. Thank you. It's a good idea. It's like a little. It's gonna be like a little knives out murder mystery game. I think we can conclude our meeting. Thank you. You're of great help to me. I'll let you know when we're ready. And please be careful. There's been some commotion in front of the tenement house again. Sometimes I don't know if they're coming for me already or if the time hasn't come yet. Of course. Goodbye. I'm pretty sure what he's just told me basically, is that um, I'm going to leave and someone's going to try to beat me up. <laughs> I'm like 90% sure that's about what, that's about, that's what's about to happen. There we go. Well, you know, sometimes you hit with 10%. Right, well, so they're going to come contact me at some point. I'm still waiting for the doctor's answer. I guess we, I guess we go do this for a bit then, yeah. Oh, we're halfway there. I feel better now, actually. <clears throat> it's just in the immediate aftermath of everything, you're a bit blah. But, um. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. <sighs> oh, my arms are dead. 
<laughs> Especially with like a new bench. Like so those who bench will know that one of the hardest things on a bench press is actually using your chest. And that's why you do a bench press, to train your chest. The natural inclination is always to use your arms. Because you're lifting a bar up. You use your arms. And it's it's the mechanisms involved to make it use your chest are actually quite difficult to, to train yourself to do. And I've got a lot better at it over time. I dropped to the weight and very much hard focused on making sure I was using my bent, my uh, chest to move the bar as much as possible. Um, you basically just push out. You keep your shoulders pinned. You lower. You raise your lower back. Plant your feet at a certain position, and you push with your chest. And it kind of that initiates the motion, right? Um, but when it's getting harder, <laughs> when you're in like that last couple of reps, I did a 12 rep thing today, three sets of 12. Those last couple of reps. Your body just kind of forgets that starts the default to using your arms, so I think that's uh, that's ruined me a little bit. Cigar stub. Admittedly, smoked to the last puff, but still quite the luxury for this district. Words of satisfaction glow on the tip of the cigar butt. Cigars and gifts just for keeping patrols away from the butcher's shop? No problem. Why am I doing this? <laughs> are, we, are we just trying to track Ariel down by... Um, finding things from him. No, in the butcher's shop window, someone wanted to write clothes for inventory, but failed and gave up after several attempts. The window radiates with a joyful anticipation of cures. The butcher's shop may be closed in theory, but every cure knows that the good stuff will come, and each of them is prepared to politely waste for Okay, what's going on with this butcher shop? What is going on with this butcher shop? It's sus. It's a sussy backer, as they say. Probably. I don't know. They probably don't say that. God, that XP bar does not move. <laughs> Empty bottle, drained to the last drop. It smells of alcohol and someone, well, unwashed. A thought flows down the side of the bottle. Not particularly cohesive, but expert in nature. He's had a lot of alcohol in his life, in every neighbourhood and from every under, under every counter, one could say. And yet the best moonshine is served at the butcher shop at Ruchik. Such are the facts of life here by the Vistula. Guess that was, is that what everyone's waiting for? Moonshine? Does moonshine just does moonshine have a flavour or does it just taste like it's gotta have a flavour, right? It can't just taste like alcohol. What moonshine tastes like? Hmm. That Nothing. wasn't too hard. I think I have had moonshine, but it's a long time ago. Create vodka bottles. The bottles are covered with dust and non missing. Is moonshine even maybe it's just more like a a method? Hmm. The bottles tremble. I'm gonna Google this. The bottles tremble from the irritation instilled in them. After all, the vodka inside them is just as good as the merchandise of this bizarre magician. If only people would appreciate that and stop buying them from under the counter. The search for the Kabbalist. Yeah, there we go. I'm also Googling Moonshine. This whole magician is none other than Ariel Rafe. One must give him credit for ruling the entire bazaar. It seems he set up a thriving moonshine distillery in a closed butcher shop. The place is worth a spirit. Worth a visit. Moonshine high proof liquor made or distributed illegally. Yeah, I think it's um I think it just has to... I don't know if it's... Hmm. It has to be at least 40% alcohol. Oh, it's a type of whiskey. No, it is. It's a type of whiskey. Interesting. It's not really a thing over here as much. You, every now and again, you'll get it. Um, you know, people buy it. Hipsters buy it, basically. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's that kind of drink. But it's not something common in the area. To say the least. Obviously, it's much more a US prohibition kind of thing. Where do you think you're going, pretty boy? I'm looking for someone. They say he's got a business here. Do the smart thing and hit the road. Go on. Fuck off. I'm looking for Ariel Rofe. Then you can double fuck off, you fucking dunk off! You'll attract more attention with that shouting. Buzz off before I get my club. You're not gonna tell me how to do my job, you flip it and raggedy sod. Beat it. You're very angry. <laughs> you should have seen the, um, <laughs> if you go back to the very first, I, I clicked through it fairly quickly. I just, I kind of just scanned the, the text and clicked the one I like. Um, but the leave option for the very first one was fuck off rather than leave, which I like. You know what? I think I've heard one fuck off too many. Then get your kisser ready for a pounding. Alright. <laughs> <Obvious. laughs> 
How come he's still standing here mouthing off at you? It's me, Victor. Shulsky, I remember. Fuck off. So, should I give him what for, boss? Do what you want. I'll be right back. But Ogras, maybe don't take on the son of Shrut Miestia on your own, yeah? I'll call you a priest if you want. Come on, boys. I'm gonna pound your kisser, apparently. <laughs> That's just far too sexual to get away with. It's just not okay. <laughs> oh, man. Right. Um, I am gonna throw out... I don't know what I'm gonna throw out. I'm gonna throw out something. I can start stacking up these. And you, I'm gonna... Marana, my... Oh, it's not pointless, though. Oh, we can do this. Uh, mm. It's not going to do any... Um, do that one. It's always the one I want to interrupt. It's always the one that attacks me first. The game does it on purpose. This guy, yeah. That one, Numpty. I'll slow him down for a little while, though. Oh, I think he's still going to stab me. Yeah, it still took place in the same turn. It didn't do a goddamn thing. <laughs> it was pointless. Um, I'd like to get rid of my bleeding. I need, I need my beloved mournful tones. I'm going to put it on... Mm, yeah. Don't make me bleed, buddy. Ow. I don't bother with the damage ones usually because it doesn't seem to apply to the dot. I don't know if I'm crazy for thinking that. I could be wrong, but definitely doesn't seem to. Stop it. What did I just say? I'm just gonna. Yeah, okay. I mean, you see what I mean? Like, we're doing tons of damage. That guy's dead. You've got a bleed on you. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw this on you, and then Lelic, my beloved. I'm gonna Morphal Tones over here. Because they're determined to make me bleed. Lots and lots. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. I've got six times that. I've got a huge amount of dots on me. Numpty. A little bit more bleeding. It's been knifed in the exact same spot like 20 times. <laughs> oh, that looks happy. All right, leave him be. I'm sorry. Come on, Shulsky. Let's get out of sight. But if anything starts shaking, I'll shoot you. Not a big. I've been shot like 50 times. <laughs> I don't think it's don't a big stare. deal if I get that shot. Way. You know, how many times can I get shot? Cover, right? None of your business. I don't really get why he hates me as much as he seems to. Um, I know, like, the golem attacked and all that, and it was a big deal, but it's also not really my fault whatsoever, you know what I mean? So... Got a problem? Take a seat. It's exploring. Sit down. Tell me why you're bothering me. How exactly did you find me? A very inventive hiding spot. And a nice place. We've got our own little store here with different varieties. I'm just doing my best to unload it efficiently. Don't waste my time. I will get to the point. I've got a certain problem and I'd like to get rid of it quickly. Is it made of clay and weighs two tons when it shows up? So you got sick of running back and forth across Kervich Bridge? I need the knowledge of a Kabbalist. Your knowledge. I think I have at least a few reasons to say no, don't I? No. The main one is the death of my business partner and best friend. That wasn't my fault. <laughs> like, I, I just, it just wasn't my fault at all. I didn't know a golem was after me. You shouldn't have shown up at the dungeon that day at all. 
You shouldn't have taken that job. I don't have time, Ariel. We both know that only you can help me. You can keep tormenting me, but are you going to tell me something or not? I can torment you and tell you. A golem is a salutor like any other, but housed in a physical form. Why do you attract it and bind it in the same way? So you need to discern the flaw of the person it's following and then defeat it. Well done. Thanks. The difference being that it's following blood first and the flaw second. But first you have to deprive the golem of its physical body. The shell in which the salutor is housed. You also need to know where the ritual was conducted, because that's the only place you can do it. Good luck. Well, we know where that is. Golem is a unique salutor due to the fact it has a physical form. As long as the material shell doesn't crack, nothing can be done about it. I know the place the Golem was summoned. The basement of Nozick Synagogue. So, so far managed to do it? Hey, you're interested now, aren't you, bucko? Everything must be done in the basement. So, apart from my family's blood, the golem is attracted to my initial flaw, right? Initial? So how many have you got? So many. I've got plenty. I have a really handsome number of salutors. You're lying. You'd have lost your mind. If you say so. How can I get rid of that clay shell it has? You can't. For that you need a Kabbalist. Moi. I know the incantation for the Barur ritual. What? Instructions for reversing the evil eye, cleansing body and soul, and hiding from the unwanted, but why should I explain them to you? I'm guessing this will cost me something. Money? A favor? A further humiliation? We'll see. I've got a theory. That if I threaten... All I do is threaten to... Right, if you don't get rid of the golem, I will follow you around, Rofe. 24-7. And when that golem one day comes back to attack, you will go down with me. Thank you. So we're going into the basement of a synagogue where you'll use Kabbalah to strip the golem of its physical form, right? Then I'll bind it and free myself from its curse? Not quite. The golem is mine. No. Over my dead body. <laughs> Very possibly. But as you said, you've got a lot of salutors. This one won't make a difference to you. And you'll never hear me say, fuck off, again. And what about my flaw? If I lose my initial flaw, I'll lose contact with my initial salutor, right? Could be yes, could be no. I don't know. Wanna find out? No. <laughs> Unless you've got a long line of relatives with flaws? Trusky family bought blood is needed to complete the ritual, the blood of someone with a flaw to be exact. I'm not going to sacrifice mine. I need to know if my sister carries one as well. Okay, so I'm in two minds here. On one hand, don't want to sacrifice Ligia. On the other hand, I don't want to risk losing Upia, obviously. But then again, I'm not going to let him take it. So, no, I'm not mentioning go. Just me. Too bad. Actually, I have a twin. An unexpected development. Victor. Does she carry a flaw? Victor! I don't know. <laughs> so, find out. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. We've got a deal. <sighs> a toast? A very successful batch. We haven't shipped everything out yet. This won't make me go blind, will it? The risk is part of the fun. Lachayim. I couldn't have said it better myself. Ready? We'll meet there. 
I've got one more thing to sort out. Don't forget your sister. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't understand. Why give me the option, right, of saying I don't have a sister if the very next line Victor's going to be like, actually, you know what? I do have a sister. <laughs> why, why are you usurping me like that, Victor? We had a deal here. I wasn't going to... Man, right, I'm not going to... I'm not 100% sure what we'll talk to Lucky. I don't know. I don't want to lose Upia. That's kind of scary, but I do want the Golem quite a lot because the Golem is the Bukovac developed one, right? Which is the main fighting technique I use. Plus, it would be really annoying to not get all of them. To miss one Salutor. Anyways, as I said, we're going to do a short video today because that will mean I can get up a little bit earlier. I've still got to go cook dinner and a million other things tonight. So, we're going to end it a little early. I promise... I don't promise anything. <laughs> Hopefully tomorrow, back to normal. Uh, thank you for joining me anyways for this half hour. I'll see you lovely folks very soon. Cheers, as always. Bye-bye.